Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the Bakhmut because situation there changes every day and Russia put new reinforcements and little by little they are taking some ground. So here is the Bakhmut city and as you can see they already crossed that natural obstacle over here. I told you about it yesterday that probably it may help Ukrainian defendants to resist against the Russians but as you can see now this small river and lakes Russians went already through it and they are now in a residential area so before they took the industrial part which is here and this is the residential area and they took uh, some of the street over here and to check everything out it was uh, yesterday and it is today so basically they penetrated the local defense line and they are now in a city itself and for us it's uh, hard we try to avoid the urban fighting we try to keep russians away from the bahamut city but they use artillery systems and reinforcements basically they destroy every building in Bahamut. there are no any buildings without the damages in Bahamut, so that is why for Russia it's more easier to assault now than they completely destroy this city. And as for the tactical chart you can see that they are pushing also on the south and here is their main vector of attack with the fighting they penetrated this line and already went to the city itself so here is our main defense line probably was uh, penetrated and also they go to Yakovlevka over here in the north they don't have success in Bakhmutske they don't have success in Solidar that's why they put more forces more to the north and their idea now is to encircle the Bakhmut from the north and from the south from the south they're very close to the city but from the north no they're far away plus we get the information that this bridge over here was destroyed uh, by someone maybe ukrainian forces maybe russians so far we don't know but still i do not expect that russians are capable to capture all of the bahamut city in their best scenario they may capture the half of the city uh, that is divided by the small river over here and if we move from bahamut to yakovlevka village over here yesterday russians captured the village uh, so it was like that but today our forces fired their artillery systems and russians simply withdraw from that one similar stuff happened on the north part of the front lines novoselovsky village russians uh, captured that one but today partially withdraw from the village and we have the information from forbes that the ukraine is planning the counter-attack towards the Melitopol direction so this is the vector I told you about it one month ago and that is the most profitable direction from all and basically with that counterattack we may cut Russian supplies from Crimea and cut Crimea itself so it's gonna be the big encirclement of the Russian forces they will be divided into two groups at least and after it little by little with the help of the rocket artillery systems we're gonna destroy them all and today Ukraine already cut the supply line for the Russian forces Ukraine haven't used the rocket artillery systems there as somehow the explosion took place on the bottom of the bridge destroying or damaging the column that supports uh, the road so that's the bridge and the explosion was on the bottom and you can see how it curved uh, probably it's unusable uh, because the tanks are really heavy and they can just go down to the water and yeah it's a great thing that ukraine can do that stuff probably we have some sort of the partisans or it was the sabotage attack by the pro-ukrainian forces in melitopol russia sends 12 more t-72 tanks to belarusia and joint forces together with belarusians moved closer to ukrainian war but still the international uh, institute of the war researchers say that the probability of the belarusia to join this war is still low my friends however still we witness how russia sent their reinforcements to the belarusian side ukraine is prepared for any kind of scenario since the april we keep our soldiers on the northern 
western part of the Ukrainian borders, waiting for the possible Belarusian invasion. Russia is producing around 40 rockets per month. It's a very low number if we speak about the war time, but still they are capable to produce enough rockets to fire and damage Ukrainian infrastructure at least once per month or once per two months. Still, they have some of the reserves and they continue to use even Ukrainian rockets like H-55 that were sent to the Russia. Then Ukraine gained the independence, so it was the part of the deal for Ukraine to get rid of the nuclear weapons and all of the weaponry that can deliver uh, the nukes to the enemy side. So we are now without rockets, without nukes, but Russia has everything, even Ukrainian rockets, and they continue to fire them to Ukraine. And with the rockets they have, they are capable for around five big attacks on Ukrainian territory. I thought that Slovakia already gave MiG-29s to Ukraine, but it seems like not. And now they're just getting ready for the deal. So for sure, they will give us those airplanes. And now the deal just have been started and it's ongoing probably in one month or something. We're going to receive those airplanes. And on Russian propaganda TV shows, they continue to say that it's just a matter of time then Western countries will provide Ukraine with all of their required weaponry, including Abrams tanks, F-16s, uh, long-haul rockets, etc. And I would agree with those guys. Uh, yes, it's just a matter of time. And yesterday, President Zelensky spoke with President Biden and our president said that the deal was agreed for something really interesting. So I'm eagerly waiting for the long haul rockets as attackers. Moscow on fire again. This time it was a big mall. I don't know about the casualties. Everything happened early morning, so there was no one in sight. And yes, they have very frequently fires on some of their Russian objects. And this is the Wagner base, Wagner soldiers in Svatova. According to the recent information, Ukraine gained a couple of the villages near to Svatova. It's on the north part in Lugansk region. And Heimer's rocket artillery systems were used to destroy uh, this residential building where Wagner Group was based. I think I'm going to share it on my Telegram channel because some of the video fragments can be disturbing and not be allowed to show on YouTube. That's why, my friends, check out my Telegram channel. It's in a video description below. France already sent TRF-1 artillery systems to Ukrainian army. Thank you so much. Those are fantastic 155 millimeter cannons and i think we're gonna have uh, 16 of them germany is very fast with their repair facilities for their panzer hub it's a 2000 so it's already working on slovakian territory and all of the damaged or faulty units will be delivered there and after fast fixing it will be delivered back to the front lines awesome there was a g7 summit today and president zelensky took place in it and he asked for more support with the weaponry including tanks uh, long-range missiles artillery systems uh, and that's the basic peace plan from zelensky because without getting back our territories it's impossible to finish this war so putin is now struggling because he's losing uh, mainly and he wants the peace deal with the Ukraine to secure what he got in Ukraine and after some re-establishing of his own forces he will go on attack again on Ukraine capturing Kiev and other parts. Sorry guys I was wrong about the bridge location in Melitopol so the one on the eastern side uh, the road was cut uh, with something but the explosion was from the bottom of the bridge it wasn't the Heimers. And by cutting this road we eliminate the Russian supplies from Rostov on Don, so only from Crimea Road the supplies may be delivered to Melitopol. Remember one week ago then Russian airfields were under attack in Rizan and Saratov? So actually in uh, Rizan uh, three men were killed by some sort of the drone and one pilot also lost his life. Why is it important my friends? Because basically those pilots thought that they are far behind the front lines, that they are safe. 
and as for russian air forces they spend quite a lot of time and money to prepare the experienced pilot and now they lost the one so it's a great loss for the russian morale far behind the front lines and also for the russian army and honestly i'm quite okay with that result with the destiny of this bastard because he fired rockets to kill civilians in ukraine including children and they almost totally demolished the Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. So it's very hard for our hospitals to function without electricity. And yes, I'm okay. I'm okay with this. So according to the Institute of the War Researches, uh, Ukraine took control over Yahidne and we returned Novoselovsk. That's great. Russia is feeling the pain of Europe's oil embargo. Yes, they now sell 1 million uh, 500,000 uh, barrels less per day than usual until the end of the next year they should sell 500,000 barrels less uh, per day that's the great hit for their budget but it could have been better today Russia attacked her son and two civilians reported uh, to lost their lives because of the Russian attacks Great Britain is open to provide Ukraine with long-range weaponry. Awesome news coming from UK. And so far we don't know the third of the weaponry that UK may provide uh, Ukraine with. But the news are awesome. Finally we see good news my friends. From Slovakia, from UK, from Germany, from United States. That Ukraine may get tanks and heavy weaponry and long-range missiles that could be a game changer in this war and for the winter time we need it for sure <laughs> russia complains of ukraine military's aggressive behavior so aggressor complains or on ukrainian aggression uh they complain to uh the turkey side but turkey said okay it's the war germany puts the patriot systems on the eastern side of the polish border so it's gonna be solved very very soon and partially those rockets may cover ukrainian territory those are the russian soldiers in syria not in ukraine and the locals uh made the improvised blog post and fire stones uh, towards the russian vehicles <laughs> well done well done for the first time in 10 years, Putin refused to give the press conference. So every December he goes uh, to media and they ask him many questions. Uh, Putin responds for this year he is scared and some of the press that i wouldn't trust uh, spread the information that he was injured he fell from the stairs and he got some of the back injury but i do not believe that i think he's just scared the <laughs> russians draw a couple of the words on the apron of the angles military airfield that recently was under attack by the drone so they wrote Death to Nazi. I think they should call Nazi themselves. Anyways, I think it's the most reliable air defense system that they have. My friends, tomorrow I'm going for the simulator check to renew my pilot license and I hope, still hope, to be able to upload the video. Hope to find the time for that. It could be short, but anyways, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. If you want to support me, just press the like button. If you want to support me financially, there are some of the links in the video description below. You may support me on Patreon, PayPal or Donatello, whichever is more suitable for you. Thank you so much for your support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.